half in the bag. Calgon, take me away. Well, you're right, Jay. Until I saw the 99% critics rating, I didn't know just how wrong we were. That's right, Mike. Boyhood is the best movie I've ever seen. Ever. No doubt, no doubt. Well, Jay, it's time we fall in line with all the other critics and let our audience know just what we really thought of Boyhood. Boyhood is the most ingenious film of this century, of any century. Linklater has created the perfect film, flawless in every way. He has sculpted a masterpiece, flawless and perfect. In fact, you can call it a masterpiece of flawlessness. Boyhood is the greatest thing to happen to cinema since the invention of the camera, and the most important thing to happen to mankind since the invention of fire. A one-of-a-kind experience. Nothing on Earth compares to this heartwarming, majestic, epic, and beautiful work of art. If the greats from the Renaissance were alive today, they would kill themselves for being so shitty compared to Linklater. Linklater's poetic dialogue about a boring kid mumbling should be compared to the greatest works of literature. In fact, if I could, I would take a shit on every book ever written, because boyhood is the best fucking thing ever! Hey there, son. Why all the yelling? Oh, he's just very passionate about how much he loves Boyhood. Oh, Boyhood? The new Richard Linklater film? Oh, that film's fucking amazing! Fuck yeah, it is! Linklater makes Truffaut look like an asshole. Yeah, fuck Truffaut! Yeah! Yeah, fuck yeah! Boyhood's so fucking awesome. Hey, Mr. Construction Worker, it sounds like you like movies. We just saw two new ones. You want to sit down and talk to us about them? Fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah, uh, I want to talk more about how much awesome, how awesome Boyhood is. I want to talk about how awesome Boyhood is! I leave you with Henry David Thoreau's words. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you have imagined. We salute you! Into the Storm is a new tornado horror movie starring no one you've ever heard of. A barrage of visual effects, wind machines, and bad dialogue bring the terror to the big screen. But what is really terrifying are the people in the theater sitting next to you. When people become so fucking fat they no longer retain the shape of a human, you know they've eaten too much popcorn. Have you seen these people? Can they chew with their mouths closed, for Christ's sake? Shit, it's louder than the movie. And this is a movie about loud-ass tornadoes. So, Rich, what did you think of Into the Storm? Oh, I, I haven't seen it. Uh... So, Jay, what did you think of Into the Storm? This movie's some dumb shit. This, this movie was like a larger budget asylum version of a Roland Emmerich disaster movie. That's what it felt like to me. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, Jay, I loved this movie. <laughs> this movie was almost a likable, bad B-movie. It was almost a guilty pleasure type, enjoyable, dumb movie. Almost. almost. It was a little too yeah. tame. It was missing... Uh, I guess we'll get into specifics of some of the things that happen in the movie, but there's some hilarious parts. Yeah. But not quite enough of them. No, and to add to the the bad. Uh, it was a found footage movie too. Which I didn't know going into it. I, I don't even think I knew what the fuck this movie was before we saw it, but this is the the laziest uh, found footage movie. They didn't make no attempt to make this seem like it's an actual found footage yeah, movie. I, th I think found footage is, is almost like a style now. And th there but this fails at that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, Half the time I was like, who's supposed to be filming I, this? I've given up on the logistics trying to figure out the logistics of a found footage. Every camera looks identical. 
uh, the, apparently they're shooting with very expensive lenses on cell phone cameras because um, <laughs> they all look exactly like the, the cinema camera that's shooting the film. And they have great microphones. Yeah. And when you're drowning in water, you, you're going to take the time to set up a camera on a tripod. Yeah, this is the part where the two, the, the, the teenage girl and the teenage boy are almost drowning. Maybe they're going to drown and then they, they embrace. Is he just holding the camera out like this to film them while they embrace? Yeah, it's very lazy in the found footage aspect. Yes. The, I mean, tornado chasers have cameras everywhere and they're fil filming, but uh, for fuck's sake. Especially yeah. towards the end when they're all hiding out in uh, like the underground sewer or whatever is the, the world's largest tornado ever is going over them. And they just keep filming. I was like, who the fuck is filming this? Yeah, I, I think I stopped thinking about it at that point. <laughs> I, I really didn't care. It's like, why why even add that? I don't know if it gives it, if it gives a cheap B-movie Lame ass pre premise, lame ass characters. If it gives it some sort of extra dimension, yeah. is that what they're thinking? A lot of times it seems like it's to save money, but this one, I mean, the, the visual effects are fine. Yeah. They look great. Um, I'm assuming this isn't the highest budget movie, but it doesn't feel like it even needs that found footage gimmick. Watch out! And it was close! Dude, my arm hurts. All the warning signs are down. If a tornado's coming your way, you're not gonna know it. There's another one. There's three, four. They're everywhere. But what happens in this movie, Mike? How does this movie compare to Twister? Uh, I believe the premise was that Bill Paxton and or Helen Hunt had a magical device called the, it had like a lady's name, like the, the Donna or the Daisy. Or, oh. It had something like, you know, when you nickname a, a, like, a, like a device or a craft or something. And, and it was supposed to get sucked up into the path of a tornado to release these little sensor balls so that they could swirl around and they could get data. Mm. It was the same premise. Tornado hunters are not just, just a-holes looking out to get footage of tornadoes for money. They are selfless uh, uh, people that want to save lives by gathering tornado, tornado data. Okay. And that's what they did. But this movie is the first one I've seen that treats uh, weather like it's some sort of slasher movie villain. Yes, yes. The, the film opens with teenagers at night uh, getting It's the killed. slasher movie opening. It's, it's a slasher the stinger, movie. They exactly. call it. It's a yeah. stinger. And then they're, they're, they're at night and they go, oh no, don't go outside. And then there's a tornado hiding in the darkness. <laughs> and, it, and it eats them. It eats their faces. Yes. And then it cuts to other teenager characters who are doing video yearbooks. He's doing it, yeah, it's like a video time, time capsule. capsule. Yeah. yeah. So that gives the excuse for cameras everywhere, and the dad is a single dad, the mom died. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Storm chaser, character insert characterization. The played, by, played by Matt Walsh from Upright Citizens Brigade. He's the head of this organization. And I gotta say, he was the best part of the movie. He, he was, was the only one that gave a performance that wasn't horrible. I thought his acting wasn't that great. I, I thought he was fine in the part. I thought it was, the, you know. The dad character, um, I, I, at one point he just stopped bothering trying to do an American accent. <laughs> He kept coming Hello, and going. Yeah. Sons, come here. Oh, oh, this, oh, 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 what? What? Yeah. It's, it's a, a script written by a computer program mm -hmm. that says plug in all elements to make us care about these characters slightly. <laughs> um, and, and then they. Yeah. Excuse me. They pardon us. We're having a discussion here. My favorite character was the one, he was one of the uh, cameramen for the, the documentary that Matt Walsh was making about tornadoes who in one scene, he says, this is too scary. We just survived a tornado. This is scary. I want to leave. And then in the very next scene, he's running out of a church up to the tornado and then just gets sucked into a fire tornado yeah. in the best scene in the film. Yeah, he, he wasn't the guy who said, I want to get all the shots. He was the guy that was scared. Yeah. And for some reason, he decided he wanted to get the, the most dangerous shot ever. <laughs> and then uh, a tornado is sucking fire up and uh, he got sucked up into the tornado. Which is great because then you see him on fire in a fire tornado, just spinning around the outside edges of it, just woo, woo. Yeah. And um, that's what the movie needed more of because that was, that was schlock in its, in its purest form. Well, that's the thing is now that they could do anything with computers, um, weather movies are now extreme. 
This is the biggest tornado I've ever seen. This one is bigger than any storm that has ever been. It's, it's a kind of movie that wants to have its cake and eat its too, where it's like, oh, you're supposed to be excited and thrilled and enjoying all this mayhem. And then at the end, they're like, we can survive this together and we can overcome these obstacles, where it's like, no, you wanted us to root for this tornado to suck people into it and destroy the city. You asked to indulge in violence and destruction and mm -hmm. death and then, uh, and then laugh at the rednecks who survived in the end. That was the worst part of the whole film. Oh, yes. Um, rednecks, amateur storm chaser rednecks who are drunk, get sucked up into a tornado. Then they have this heartfelt ending where all the, char the, he the main characters are saying how much they love each other, how much they can, they can now rebuild their community. And that cuts to the rednecks and hanging in the trees. And yeah. they're like, we survived. <laughs> it's like Looney Tunes. Mm -hmm. Tornadoes are devastating and dangerous, but oh, sure. it's like they'll appear and then they'll go away. Like 16 of them don't appear and then they don't become the size of an entire state. It becomes, it becomes ridiculous. It's oh like, yeah, it's the super tornado. It's two super tornadoes that come together at the end to create a giant mega super tornado. It's just a bunch of dumb shit. The weird thing is, they it's it starts in a high school graduation, and then they have to stop the graduation because of the tornado. And I could actually relate to that. That happened to me. My high school graduation was interrupted by a tornado. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what happened? Ever, uh, to everyone... uh, we, they said, go inside, because we were about to go outside to take our pictures. They said, go inside. We see a tornado over there. So we all went inside. And then 10 minutes later, they said, OK, everything's clear. And then we all left, and I got lunch. So the world's biggest tornado that can rip apart brick uh, buildings didn't come, come and get you? No, it did not, no. Okay. I just went and got uh, spaghetti. Oh my god! It's moving too fast! We're not gonna run it! They cover! Hang on! So Mike, would you recommend whatever this movie was called? No. If you want to see a action weather movie, it's good. If that's what you want to see, this movie delivers. If you don't care about characters, I guess at all, yeah. Yeah, I, and the I didn't the first half was kind of annoying, mildly mild to moderately annoying mm. with the found footage stuff and then it's like, okay, this character is going to do this and it's very predictable. Yeah. Um and then the second half, when some of the drama starts happening, like the non-tornado related drama, we gotta get here, we gotta, you, you have to come to this car and move around, and oh no, the car fell over, we gotta move to, uh, we kind of watched it and followed what was happening and, and hoped the kids got rescued from drowning, and um, I, I, I was okay with it. Mm. But uh, don't pay money to see it in the theater. I've seen worse, Jay. Oh, sure. I've seen worse. There's plenty worse. This is this movie is harmlessly bad. It's not good, but it's harmless. I would not recommend it. It's not bad enough to be entertaining, and it's not good enough to be entertaining. Yes. It falls right in the middle there, which is the worst spot. Oh my god, I forgot he was here. Oh, uh, it's not the ghost of a dead construction man? Sir? Ma'am? Rich, we're done talking about the movie you haven't seen. You can stop being a statue now. Rich, did you see the Ninja Turtles movie? Yes, I have. Is it it over? Surveillance is showing heavy foot clan activity. They're taking hostages. Let's rock and roll. This is our city. That's what I'm talking about. Like shadows in the night, you don't believe the unseen. Who's that? It's a camera flash. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are back. Only this time, they're CGI instead of rubber costumes. Although technically, they were CGI last time, but that was completely CGI. 
Uh, and they were also a cartoon at one point as well. Multiple times they've been a cartoon. And a comic book too. They've and a been comic book. Every form of media. And, and uh, toys, many, many toys. They've been toys, but they're back. Jay, you forgot rock band. They were also a rock band. This time they do some things on screen and fight Shredder and try to stop someone from releasing gas onto the city or whatever. And then the movie ends, I think. Mike, what did you think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Well, I'm sure I'll be a dissenting voice, but I actually enjoyed Ninja Turtles <laughs> quite a bit. I see a lot of the problems, but um, I, I didn't hate this movie. I, I enjoyed it, especially the second half, more than I thought I would. When it gets more stupider. The best thing I can say about this movie is that I didn't hate it. It's Michael Bay, and everyone says it looks like Transformers, but with Ninja Turtles, mm. and Michael Bay didn't direct it. He just no, produced it. he was one of three producers. But it, but it looks like a Michael Bay movie. Um, no, I disagree. No? I disagree. It, wa it was not... The, the director of this made Battle Los Angeles, which, that classic. which I also enjoyed. There, the, the, the action scenes and the pacing of it had this kind of energy to it, and I thought they... Um, this, uh, you know, you're just starting with a concept of mutant ninja turtles, and you're talk, starting with this completely ridiculous premise that's made for children. Yes. Although it wasn't originally made for children, of course. Uh, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman wrote it, and I think they were on acid, right? <laughs> that's the, that's <laughs> were, the legend. They were on something. The the original comics would would definitely earn an R rating, mm -hmm. but I, I, I'd say age-wise, probably geared more towards like a 14 or 15 year sure. old rather yeah. than a seven or eight year old. That's that's probably something we should point out is that this movie was not made for us. Because people are like, oh no, it's Michael Bay's producing, he's ruining the integrity of the Ninja Turtles. But aside from the original comic, the Ninja Turtles have always been a product. From, from the cartoon on, they've been horrible sellouts. Yeah, uh, again, like the Transformers, the cartoon existed as a 30 minute ad to sell toys. Sure, unlike the Transformers though, they did start from somewhere Relics with some integrity. They I did, but as far as what people know about the Ninja Turtles and pop culture, they know the cartoon, sure. they know the toys. No one, no one really cares about the original comic book. You have this weird premise that's made now appeals to children, uh, was made for teenagers and old men now have nostalgia for it. So you have this quasi-audience uh, demographic, and this movie was, was PG-13. It was surprisingly violent, which I enjoyed. Um, and uh, I, thought, I thought it was a good action movie with some fun moments in it, aside from a really, really lousy script. Yes, well that's the thing for me, it was just such a confused movie as far as who it was trying to be aimed at, because there, we, there were a lot of kids in the theater when we saw it, and when the Ninja Turtles, the movie felt like a 90 minute trailer. It felt like it was like break, this breakneck pace where they were just in such a hurry to get over with, which I am okay with, because I, was, uh, I would, was happy for it to get over as soon as possible, but it, it, there are scenes where it's just the wacky Ninja Turtles and they're being goofy and, and they're like the Ninja Turtles, like they've always been. But then it cuts to Shredder, and it cuts to William Fickner, and it cuts to the Foot, who are now like horrible, violent terrorists. And the Ninja Turtles are bulletproof, and there's nothing like ninja-like or fun about any of the action. It was really, and then it cuts to Splinter getting pizza thrown on his face, and it was just all over the place as far as the tone goes. They're, they're wacky occasionally in short bursts, but the way the way they came off to me was more just large and intimidating. <laughs> they, they they felt like four large intimidating gangsters. Mm. They wanted to sell drugs on my property, and I I couldn't do anything about it because they were armed. Yeah. Do not say a word about this to anyone. If you do, we will find you. Yeah, we'll find you. I'm sorry, that came across super creepy. Okay, that's. We will find you though. Well, the, the initial introduction of the Ninja Turtles is kind of scary, so th that's why, like, it's good that it's rated PG-13. I wouldn't take a, anyone under eight, seven? But, but, little, kids, 
But little kids will want to see this movie. That's the thing. There was tons of kids in the theater when we saw it. There was one point when Michelangelo, he says something goofy, and the kid goes, oh, Mikey. Yeah, but that was at the end. Yeah, kids want to see this. Sure, and I think it's fine for for kids that can talk. I'll I'll give it I'll give it that level, okay? okay. Because I, I think you know, we've discussed this before like um growing up, you you see a lot of a lot of movies from the 80s were darker and um I think kids can take it. I think kids Yeah, the violence angle didn't bother me. No, no. And it's a little scary when they show up at first. It's it's a little dark, but I've seen dark movies when I was a kid and I'm sure. fine. Uh, but <laughs> you know, it's like maybe not a four-year-old or a three-year-old because they should be watching uh, uh, the Lego movie or some sort of bright, animated, colorful cartoon. This is not for them. That's why it has a PG-13 rating. Yeah. As 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 a grown-up, um, I I thought the 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 premise was was tired. The gas, of course, we've seen that in 28 movies recently. Uh, I thought. The, the writing was kind of dumb at points, but I thought the Ninja Turtles were written well enough and they did some funny things, they made me laugh, and I enjoyed the action scenes. I wasn't bored during the action scenes, which has happened a lot to me recently. Yeah. I, I, I kept thinking of The Hobbit. Um, oh God. I don't remember if it was the first or the second one, when they're going down the river on the barrels. That's the second one. That was, a, that was an okay action scene, but I remember like kind of phasing out. Mm -hmm. This one has a similar scene where a truck is going down a, a, a mountain of snow, and the, the Ninja Apparently Turtles, the highest mountain in existence, because they just keep on going. And um, apparently in the New York City area. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that. It's, well it's summer well. in New York, but just outside of New York, yeah, it's, it's winter uh, and snowy. Mount Everest is five miles away from New York City, uh, <laughs> somewhere. Uh, that didn't make any sense at all to me, but yeah. who cares? Uh, <laughs> but the Ninja Turtles are on their backs and they're flipping, and then the truck's sliding. And I thought that was a fun action scene. Uh, the, I thought it went on too long and it got obnoxious. It went on a little too long, but yeah. it, at least see this is this is a weird comparison, but the movie reminded me of Escape from L.A. Escape from L.A. is a shit movie. It's a terrible movie, but Snake Plissken is still Snake Plissken in it. Uh, it's a shit movie around him, but he's still that same character. And this was the Ninja Turtles. They're still the wacky, goofy Ninja Turtles that kids like. They're just in this shit movie. Um, but that, that action scene, like at, at the very least, they all get to use their particular little traits. Uh, Michelangelo at one point, he pulls out a skateboard and he's skating down the mountain. They all have their own little little moments to shine as the type of characters that they've been established for however long yeah. the Ninja Turtles have been around. Surprisingly around. developed for the time frame they had. I mean, it, it felt it, like there were scenes missing, like that connects yeah, a lot of the character right. moments. The April O'Neil character like is already like, oh, Donatello, she calls him Donnie. And yeah. it's like, you just met them in the sewer for like five minutes. And then she but calls him family at the end. It's well, like, you barely know these guys. No, well, it was because she raised the box turtles in her dad's Oh, lab. that's right. I so, oh, I already forgot about <laughs> The fact that I this is the most convenient story that, ever. That is pretty, pretty ham-fisted inconvenience. The fact that her dad worked with the scientist guy. This is a very close-knit plot yeah. in terms of character connections, but... What I was going to say is that it seems too soon to already be remaking The Amazing Spider-Man. My sons, I have trained you your whole lives to protect the city above. But I fear you are not ready for its greatest threat. We're taking your armor to the next level. Shredder. I don't want to give an excuse like this is a kid's movie because you could say that about Transformers, you could say about whatever, the kids' movies, are, they could be dumb. Um, but I thought this one was more coherent than a, a normal Michael Bay Transformers movie. Um, it was less obnoxious. It's still stupid. Oh, sure. <laughs> but again, this one this one falls into the, it's stupid, you know, William Fickner um, saying, we're going to release the gas, Master Shredder. Like saying this ridiculous, <laughs> stupid dialogue. And then the, the mutagen and uh, is like green and red and it's like, Gas. Yeah. It just says gas, and, <laughs> and it's like so simplistic. But that's okay in this particular movie. I give it a pass I, because uh, I don't know. Little kids have to understand it. N not only gas, but also magic blood that heals wounds. <laughs> Why don't they want to kidnap Splinter too? Wouldn't Splinter also have the mutagen in his blood? 
Instead of just beating him to death and leaving him there? I, I suppose he would, unless they injected him with a different mutagen. I didn't understand why they injected turtles with the mutagen in the first place. They just need to test subjects, like just test, testing their thing well, on the animals. Well, usually you use a monkey. Mon monkeys and uh, like chimpanzees are the closest thing to humans, so that's why they test drugs and stuff. Mike, monkeys. it had to be turtles because it's a ninja turtle yeah. movie. So yeah, it didn't make sense why they tested it on turtles. And they should have gave some BS excuse because that doesn't make it much sense. They to gave me. BS excuses to everything else in the movie. Why not that? Everything's brushed over, like the, the why they're ninjas. Yeah, like, that's oh, the worst. We're mutants, so we get uh, swept down into the sewer. We're growing up. Hey, look, here's a book on ninjas. I guess Splinter's like, I guess I'll train these turtles to do ninjutsu. Yeah, that also gave him an Asian accent, too. <laughs> it gave him a Tony Shalhoub trying to do Asian accent. Yeah. That was sort of weird. Um, yeah, lots of conveniences, lots of swept over. The reason they're called the foot is because they step on people. That was said during the opening narration. Well, again, though, okay, you're complaining about how a giant mutated rat becomes a kung fu master. Doesn't matter, and that's the question. It, it does to a certain extent. You, you don't want to be you don't want to be accused of being um, uh, a hypocrite when when you could say ah, it's just a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I mean, it's a ridiculous premise. Oh, sure. If you really think about it, yeah. it's yeah. stupid, but. You, then, if it's so stupid, you can't complain about how Splinter becomes a ninja master. Because <laughs> it's so dumb. All right, there is a cartoon going on right now on Nickelodeon. It's a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. And Splinter is a fully fleshed out, thought out, realized character that okay. has emotions and a backstory. Yeah, you can have a movie like this where the premise is completely ridiculous and still have it be well written too. Mm. It's interesting that this came out the weekend after Guardians of the Galaxy, because that's a movie where I, I think younger audiences, the same age audiences that would go see Ninja Turtles can, can appreciate it, yeah. you know, 12, 14 year olds. And that's a movie where all the backstories of all our main characters yeah. are really dark, but the movie itself is lighthearted and fun and everybody's fleshed out and their, their motivations make sense. This movie's just like junk. It's, it, it is lazy writing, but how do you set up a story like this and still keep little kids interested? There, there are scenes there, where- There's an example of that. It's called the first Ninja Turtles movie, which I isn't a masterpiece that. by I any means, but it makes complete sense and it's well done for what it is. Yeah, do they do they explain the origin? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Well, they, no, they just walk into like radioactive goo, right? They don't explain the backstory of the ooze. That's what the secret of the ooze is for. Okay. Which I will say this new Ninja Turtle movie is better than uh, Secret of the Ooze or Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time. Sure, sure. Uh, for whatever does, that's worth. Does Splinter, uh, do they explain how Splinter becomes a ninja yes. master? Yeah, he, he was the pet of a, a, uh, a ninja master. Oh, okay. He, he was in the room him. when he was training all day, every oh, day. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's plenty of stuff that makes sense. It's still a ridiculous premise, but mm. everything makes sense. And this is a movie where all the details are just brushed over with dumb yeah. nonsense. Yeah, I, I, the details of the writing is, is pretty terrible. Yeah. And, and there's, there's a lot of... Um... And you can say, oh, it's for kids, but you can only say that to a certain extent, where it just sure. feels like like cynical slapdick. This feels like a first draft, and they're just like, oh, it's good enough. Yeah, yeah. Sensei, you must stop Shredder. Together, you are stronger than he can ever be. Let's go save my brothers. I thought it was an odd touch. They make a point of saying early on that they're there to remain hidden. They're to remain out of the public sight until they're ready because they're teenagers, they're cocky kids, they're yeah. younger. And yet when they save April O'Neil early on, uh, oh no, they don't save April O'Neil. She's spying on the bad guys. And then one of the turtles shows up and he stops the bad guys from doing whatever they're doing yeah. by the docks. And then he leaves behind like a symbol. <laughs> like if you're trying to remain anonymous, why would you leave that symbol behind? It's April needed something to investigate. April needed exactly, something yeah. To that had that, the first act of this movie would be a lot more entertaining if you watch it with the mindset that the turtles don't actually exist and April O'Neil's just a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My my biggest complaint about the movie though is the tone being all over the place as far as who it's aimed at. I was never sure because there was the scenes with the Ninja Turtles just being wacky Ninja Turtles. The kids in the theater were laughing. They loved it. And then there was these really dark, violent scenes. Like the middle act of the second act of the movie 
Shredder beats the shit out of everybody. They show up in the sewer. Mm -hmm. uh, he beats the shit out of Raphael, and you hear like his bones cracking and breaking. He holds up Splinter and like punches him in the gut. Yeah. And he thinks he kills him. And then the turtles are held captive, and they're like shooting him with tasers. There was a lot of violence. And it was just like the most miserable thing. And I felt so bad. I was thinking like, oh, these kids are probably having fun right now. It wasn't especially fun violence. No, it wasn't. And there's, you can find a balance. Again, like something Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's, it's finding that balance between taking the action and the, the serious elements, you know, serious to a certain extent, but still, you know, keeping the movie entertaining. Yeah. To me, this movie was not entertaining whenever the turtles weren't just being goofy ninja turtles. Yeah, well, those are the strongest parts when they're being wacky. And I didn't, I wasn't annoyed by that. No, I, I was worried that it was going to be more like those racist uh, Transformers from the second Transformers movie. Yeah, when they, they're just, it's so annoying and grating and obnoxious. I, I like the Ninja Turtles themselves in, in this movie. They, they were fine, they were fun. yeah. And I, but I agree with the tone and, you know, darker moments. It's like they couldn't please both audiences. They don't want to make it too kiddie, but they also wanted to make it dark and cool yeah. for the, the man-child fanboy out there that want to see Ninja Turtles fight mechanized Shredder in yeah. a giant power armor suit. Ma Manchild just don't want them to fight a metal Shredder. They want them to fight the regular Shredder. They just want to see the same shit they saw when they were yeah, 12 they years want, old. They yeah. want the nostalgia trip. Yeah. And I don't know who this movie was supposed to appeal to because why are the Foot Clan, they're just guys with guns now? Yeah, they're not. there's very little ninja yeah, they stuff in they this Ninja ninjas. Turtles movie. Yeah, they're just armed thugs. They're armed terrorists, basically, yeah. Did they try, we always said that all new all new superhero movies are getting the Dark Knight treatment. Yeah. Was this a very, very vague effort of giving Ninja Turtles the Dark Knight treatment? <sighs> Not with the characters themselves, maybe with the world they inhabit. Again, like Escape from LA, it's a completely different environment, a completely different movie, but the turtle characters are still the same as they've always been. Mm. Well, the focus is kind of on April. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. wondering, if somebody who actually made a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie didn't worry that a ninja foot clan in New York was too silly. I guess. <laughs> Could that have been the thought You process? got Ninja Turtles, you're already I, silly. Go I, all out. I know, <laughs> I know, but somebody who's trying to make a dark, gritty, violent, realistic Ninja Turtle movie and thinking, well, we can't do silly ninjas <laughs> in our Ninja Turtle movie. <laughs> One's fighting low on Samurai. Why not? If you compare it to the, the turtles and their backstory and all this stuff, like, sure, it was a sloppy script, moved along at a fine pace and it was entertaining, and I think it'll be fun for kids over six. To me, it was, it was junk, but it was harmless junk. Sure. It didn't make me angry. It didn't make me angry. I didn't roll my eyes. I didn't get upset. There's there's something about it that gave it gave it a, a like a nice fuzzy glow to it that slipped by you know unlike unlike a Transformers film where it's just like an assault on your senses yeah. and your intelligence mm -hmm. like this I can recognize it for what it is and accept it I, I didn't get that glow I I hated the movie Did you hate it because? It was a bad Ninja Turtles movie, or just because it was a bad movie? Because I didn't think it was a terrible movie. The, the, the plot was really, really just so dumb, I don't believe how dumb it is dumb. <laughs> I mean, the, the businessman is going to make money by gassing millions of people to death. <laughs> I, I, I didn't particularly care for the Ninja Turtles themselves. I didn't, mm. I didn't despise their take on them, but... It didn't do much for me. Yeah, they could have expanded that a little more. They could have made them a little more fun, had more comedic scenes with them. April was a dumb character, so I just... It wasn't outright seething hate like I had for The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It was more <laughs> like I just never really cared about what was going on. So, Mike, would you recommend Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Um, I'm going to go with a yes on this one. I, I enjoyed it. Mostly. I, 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 I would not recommend the movie. I would say if you have a 10-year-old a, a who, who loves the cartoons and the toys and they want to see it because it says Ninja Turtles, take it to see it. They'll, they'll enjoy the, the 10 seconds where Michelangelo's being funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then you... 
you can go home, you can forget about the movie until the sequel comes out, then you might have and to take you your kid to see again. it then if they, if they haven't gotten over the Ninja Turtles, and then you can forget about that yeah. after it's out of the theaters. Yeah. I would not recommend it either. I would say, yeah, just pray that your kids, by the time the second one comes out, they're old enough to not care about the Ninja Turtles anymore. Like, we all reach that age, I think. So they're aliens? No, that's stupid. They're turtles. Is there anything else we should know about them? They're ninjas. <laughs> oh, geez, I totally forgot why I came in here. Yeah, you guys can't be in this house. What? Why? Because it's being used as a repository for chlorofluorobenzene, a highly toxic gas. But this is somebody's house. Eh, don't look at me. The way I understand it, the chemical company down the way, they can't dump their toxic waste into the air or the sea. But due to a legal loophole, they can dump it into a private residence. Is that why the city rebuilt Plinkett's house right here? Yeah, some corrupt politician built that into the contract for this place. Yeah, dirty bastards taking money under the table from the chemical company. Damn corruption. Damn deadly gas. If only we had real superheroes like the Ninja Turtles. Wait a minute, Jay. Maybe breathing in all this gas will give us superpowers. Then we could fight the corrupt politicians and the chemical companies on our own. Yeah, well, let's just sit here and breathe in these toxic chemicals and see what happens. That sounds good. <sighs> well, good luck breathing in all these carcinogenic gases. I'm going to go outside and have a cigarette. <coughs> believe, Mike, believe. I can feel the superpowers taking hold already. I think it's working.